Dramatis Personae of the Tempest by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Alonzo, King of Naples, read by Craig Franklin. Sebastian, his brother, read by Thomas Peter. Prospero, the right Duke of Milan, read by Brad. Antonio, his brother, the usurping Duke of Milan, read by Sonia. Ferdinand, son to the King of Naples, read by Thomas Peter. Gonzalo, an honest old counsellor, read by Craig Franklin. Adrian, a lord, read by Brad. Francisco, a lord, read by by thomas peter caliban a savage and deformed slave read by thomas peter trinculo a jester read by craig franklin stefano a drunken butler read by brad master of a ship read by brad boatswain read by craig franklin first mariner read by sonia second mariner read by brad third mariner read by craig franklin fourth mariner read by thomas peter miranda daughter to prospero read by sonia ariel an airy spirit read by sonia iris a spirit read by craig franklin ceres a spirit read by thomas peter juno a spirit read by sonia stage directions read by craig franklin end of dramatis personae act one of the tempest by william shakespeare this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act one scene one on a ship at sea a tempestuous noise of thunder and lightning heard enter a shipmaster and a boatswain boatswain here mister what cheer good speak to the mariners fall to it yarley or we run ourselves aground be stir Beaster! Exit. Enter Mariners. Hi, my heart! Cheerly, cheerly, my heart! Yeah, yeah! Take in the topsail! Tend to the master's whistle! Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough! Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo, and others. Good boatswain! Have care. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now keep below. Where is the master, Bosun? Do you not hear him? You mar our labour, keep your cabins, you do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is hence, what cares these roarers for the name of king? To cabin silence trouble us not good yet remember whom thou hast aboard <laughs> none that i more love than myself you are a counsellor if you can command these elements to silence and work the peace of the present we will not hand a rope more use your authority if you cannot give thanks you have lived so long and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour if it so hap cheerly good hearts out of our way i say exit i have great comfort from this fellow methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him his complexion is perfect gallows stand fast good fate to his hanging make the rope of his destiny our cable for our own doth little advantage if he be not born to be hanged our case is miserable Exeunt. Re-enter Boatswain. Down with the topmast! 
Yeah, lower, lower. Bring her to try with main course. A cry within. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather or our office. Re-enter Sebastian, Antonio, and Gonzalo. Yet again, what do you hear? Shall we give o'er and drown? Have you a mind to sink? A uh, pox of your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, and charitable dog. Work you then. Hang, cur. Hang, you horse, and insolent noisemaker. We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art. I'll warrant you for drowning. Though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell, and as leaky as an unstanched wench. Lay her a hold, a hold. Set her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off. Enter mariners wet. All lost to prayers, to prayers. All lost. What must our mouths be cold? The king and prince at prayers. Let's assist them. For our cases as theirs, I'm out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. This white chapped rascal, would thou mightst lie drowning the washing of ten tides. He'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against it, and gape at widest to glut him. A confused noise within. Mercy on us! We split! we split farewell my wife and children farewell brother we split we split we split let's all sink with the king let's take leave of him exeunt antonio and sebastian now would i give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground long heath brown furs anything the will's above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. Exeunt. Scene two. The island. Before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch but that the sea mounting to the welkin's cheek dashes the fire out oh i have suffered with those that i saw suffer a brave vessel who had no doubt some noble creature in her dashed all to pieces oh the cry did knock against my very heart poor souls they perished had i been any god of power I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed, and the frothing souls within her. Be collected. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day! No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Lend thy hand, and pluck my magic garment from me. So. Lays down his mantle lie there my art wipe thou thine eyes have comfort the direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee i have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul no not so much perdition as an hair betid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry which thou sawst sink. Sit down, for thou must now know farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding, stay, 
not yet the hours now come the very minute bids thee ope thine ear obey and be attentive canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell i do not think thou canst for then thou wast not out three years old certainly sir i can by what by any other house or person of anything the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance tis far off and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants had i not four or five women once that tended me thou hadst and more miranda but how is it that this lives in thy mind what seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time if thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here how thou camest here thou mayst but that i do not twelve years since miranda twelve years since thy father was the duke of milan and a prince of power sir are not you my father thy mother was a piece of virtue and she said thou wast my daughter and thy father was duke of milan and his only heir and princess no worse issued oh the heavens what foul play had we that we came from thence or blessed wast we did both both my girl by foul play as thou sayest were we heaved thence but blessedly hope hither oh my heart bleeds to think at the teen that i had turned you to which is from my remembrance please you father my brother and thy uncle called antonio i pray thee mark me that a brother should be so perfidious he whom next thyself of all the world i loved and to him put the manage of my state as at that time through all the signories it was the first and prospero the prime duke being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal arts without a parallel those being all my study the government i cast upon my brother and to my state grew stranger being transported and wrapped in secret studies thy false uncle dost thou attend me sir most heedfully being once perfected how to grant suits how to deny them whom to advance and whom to trash for overtopping new created the creatures that were mine i say or changed em or else new formed em having both the key of officer and office set all hearts of the state to what tune pleased his ear that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on t of a tense knot how oh, good sir i do i pray thee mark me i thus neglecting worldly ends all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which but by being so retired or prized all popular rate in my false brother awaked an evil nature and my trust like a good parent did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was which had indeed no limit a confidence sans bound he being thus lauded not only with what my revenue yielded but what my power might else exact like one who having into truth by telling of it made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie he did believe he was indeed the duke out to the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative hence his ambition growing dost thou hear your tale sir would cure deafness to have no scream between this part he played and him he played it for he needs will be absolute milan me poor man my library was dukedom large enough of temporal royalties he thinks me now incapable confederates so dry he was for sway with the king of naples to give him annual tribute do him homage subject his coronet to his crown and bend the dukedom yet unbowed 
alas poor milan to most ignoble stooping oh the heavens mark his condition and the event then tell me if this might be a brother i should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother good rooms have borne bad sons now the condition this king of naples being an enemy to me inveterate hearkens my brother's suit which was that he in lieu of the premises of homage and i know not how much tribute should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom and confer fair milan with all the honours on my brother whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight fated to the purpose did antonio open the gates of milan and to the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self alack for pity i not remembering how i cried out then will cry it over again it is a hint that rings mine eyes to it here a little further and then i'll bring thee to the present business which now's upon us without the which this story were most impertinent wherefore did they not that hour destroy us well demanded wench my tale provokes that question dear they durst not so dear the love my people bore me nor set a mark so bloody on the business but with colours fairer painted their foul ends in few they hurried us aboard a bark bore us some leagues to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat not rigged nor tackle sail nor mast the very rats instinctively have quit it there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong alack what trouble was i then to you oh what cherubin thou wast that did preserve me thou didst smile infused with a fortitude from heaven when i have decked the sea with drops full salt under my burden groaned which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue how came we ashore by providence divine some food we had and some fresh water that a noble neapolitan gonzalo out of his charity who being then appointed master of this design did give us with rich garments linen stuffs and necessaries which since have steaded much so of his gentleness knowing i loved my books he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that i prize above my dukedom would i might but ever see that man now i arise resumes his mantle sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow here in this island we arrived and here have i thy schoolmaster made thee more profit than other princesses can that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful heavens thank you for it and now i pray you sir for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea-storm know thus far forth by accident most strange bountiful fortune now my dear lady hath mine enemies brought to this shore and by my prescience i find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star whose influence if now i court not but omit my fortunes will ever after droop here cease more questions thou art inclined to sleep tis a good dullness and give it way i know thou canst not choose Miranda sleeps. Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach my Ariel. Come. Enter Ariel. All hail, great master. Grave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire to ride on the curled clouds to thy strong bidding 
task Ariel and all his quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? To every article I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometimes I'd divide and burn in many places. On the top mast, the yards, and the bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad, and played some tricks of desperation. All but merriness plunged in the foaming brine, and quit the vessel. Then, all afire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then, like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Why, that's my spirit. But was not this nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perish. On their sustaining garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badest me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the kingship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbour is the king's ship. In the deep nook where once thou callest me up at midnight to fetch you from the still vexed Bermoothies, there she stood, the mariners all on the hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labour, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked, and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. <sighs> Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without all grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and think'st it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been. 
which thou forgetst. This damned witch, Sycorax, for mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argier thou knowest was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers, and in her most unmitigable rage into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill-wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp hag-born, not honoured with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dull thing, I say so, he that Caliban, whom now I keep in service, thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl, and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art, when I arrived and heard thee, that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command, and to my spiriting, gently. Do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this shape, and hither come in. Go hence with diligence. Exit, Ariel. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. Oh, oh. oh this strangeness of your story put heaviness in me shake it off come on we'll visit caliban my slave who never yields us kind answer oh tis a villain sir i do not love to look on but as tis we cannot miss him he does make our fire fetch in our wood and serves in offices that profit us what ho slave caliban Thou earth, thou, speak. Caliban, within. There's wood enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Re-enter Ariel like a water-nymph. Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Exit. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. Enter Caliban. As wicked days ere my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both. A southwest blow on ye and blister you all over. For this be sure, to-night thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up, urchin shell for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb each pinch more stinging than bees that made em i must eat my dinner this island's mine by sycorax my mother which thou takest from me when thou camest first thou strokest me and latest much of me wouldst give me water with berries and, and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less that burn by day and night and then i loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle the fresh springs brine pits barren place and fertile 
Cursed be I that did so. All oh, the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all of the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you star me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move, not kindness. I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care, and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honour of my child. Ha, <laughs> ha, 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 ha! been done, thou didst prevent me. I had peopled us this isle with calibans. Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness wilt not take, being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known, but thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that int which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. Ye taught me language, and my prophet aunt is, I ne had a curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. <laughs> Hag seed hence. Fetch us in fuel, and be quick, that best, to answer other business. Shrugst thou, Malice? If thou neglect'st, or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. Aside. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my damn's god, Setibus and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing. Ferdinand following. Should this music be in the air or the earth? It sounds no more, and sure it waits upon some god of the island, sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck. This music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. Full far and five, thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade. But the sufferers he change into something. The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I, I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yond. What is it? 
a spirit lord how it looks about believe me sir it carries a brave form but tis a spirit no wench it eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such this gallant which thou seest was in the wreck and but he's something stained with grief that's beauty's canker thou mightst call him a goodly person he hath lost his fellows and strays about to find him i might call him a thing divine for nothing natural i ever saw so noble prospero aside it goes on i see as my soul prompts it spirit fine spirit i'll free thee within two days for this most sure the goddess on whom these airs attend vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island and that you will some good instruction give how i may bear me here my prime request which i do last pronounce is o oh, you wander if you be made or no <sighs> no wonder sir but certainly a maid my language heavens i am the best of them that speak this speech would i but where it is spoken how the best what wert thou if the king of naples heard thee a single thing as i am now that wanders to hear thee speak of naples he does hear me and that he does i weep myself am naples who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked alack for mercy yes faith and all his lords the duke of milan and his brave son being twain prospero aside the duke of milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now it were fit to do it at the first sight they have changed eyes delicate ariel i'll set thee free for this to ferdinand a word good sir i fear you have done yourself some wrong a word why speaks my father so ungently this is the third man that ever i saw the first that ever i sighed for pity move my father to be inclined my way oh if a virgin and your affection not gone forth i'll make you the queen of naples soft sir one word more aside they are both in either's powers but this swift business i must uneasy make lest too light winning make the prize light to ferdinand one word more i charge thee that thou attend me thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy to win it from me the lord aunt no as i am a man there's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple if the ill spirit have so fair a house good things will strive to dwell with it follow me speak not you for him he's a traitor come i'll manacle thy neck and feet together sea water shalt thou drink thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels withered roots and husks wherein the acorn cradled follow no i will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power draws and is charmed from moving o oh, dear father make not too rash a trial of him for he is gentle and not fearful what i say my foot my tutor put thy sword up traitor who makes the show but dares not strike thy conscience is so possessed with guilt come from thy ward for i can here disarm thee with his stick and make thy weapon drop beseech you father hence hang not on my garments sir have pity i'll be his surety silence one word more shall make me chide thee if not hate thee what an advocate for an impostor hush thou thinks there is no more such shapes as he having seen but him and caliban foolish wench to the most of men this is a caliban and they to him are angels 
my affections are then most humble i have no ambition to see a goodlier man come on obey thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigour in them so they are my spirits as in a dream are all bound up my father's loss the weakness which i feel the wreck of all my friends and all this man's threats to whom i am subdued are but light to me might i but through my prison once a day behold this maid all corners else of the earth let liberty make use of space enough have i in such a prison prospero aside it works to ferdinand come on thou hast done well fine ariel to ferdinand follow me to ariel hark what thou else shalt do me be of comfort my father's of a better nature sir than he appears by speech this is unwonted which now came from him thou shalt be as free as mountain winds but then exactly do all points of my command to the syllable come follow speak not for him exeunt end of act one Act Two of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, Another Part of the Island. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others be seat you sir be merry you have cause so have we all of joy for our escape is much beyond our loss our hint of woe is common every day some sailor's wife the masters of some merchant and the merchant have just our theme of woe but for the miracle i mean our preservation few in millions can speak like us then wisely good sir weigh our sorrow with our comfort prithee peace he receives comfort like cold porridge the visitor will not give him over so look he's winding up the watch of his wit by and by it will strike sir one tell when every grief is entertained that's offered comes to the entertainer a dollar dollar comes to him indeed you have spoken truer than you purposed you have taken it wiselier than i meant you should therefore my lord fie what a spendthrift is he of his tongue i prithee spare well i have done but yet he will be talking which of he or adrian for a good wager first begins to crow the old cock the cockerel done the wager <laughs> laughter a match though this island seem to be desert <laughs> so you're paid uninhabitable and almost inaccessible yet yet he could not miss it it must needs be a subtle tender and delicate temperance temperance was a delicate wench ay and subtle as he most learnedly delivered the air breathes upon us here most sweetly as if it had lungs and rotten ones <sighs> or as twere perfumed by a fan here is everything advantageous to life true save means to live of that there's none or little how lush and lusty the grass looks how green the ground indeed is tawny with an eye of green in it he misses not much no he doth but mistake the truth totally but the rarity of it is which is indeed almost beyond credit as many vouched rarities are 
that our garments being as they were drenched in the sea hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses being rather new dyed than strained with salt water if but one of his pockets could speak would it not say he lies ay or very falsely pocket up his report methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in africa at the marriage of the king's fair daughter claribel to the king of tunis twas a sweet marriage and we prosper well in our return tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen not since widow dido's time widow a pox of that how came that widow in widow dido what if he had said widow or aeneas too <laughs> good lord how you take it widow dido say you you make me study of that she was of carthage not of tunis this tunis sir who is carthage carthage i assure you carthage ha <laughs> his word is more than the miraculous harp he hath raised the wall and houses too what impossible matter will he make easy next i think he will carry this island home in his pocket and give it his son for an apple <laughs> and sowing the kernels of it in the sea bring forth more islands ay why in good time sir we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at tunis at the marriage of your daughter who is now queen and the rarest that ever came there bait i beseech you widow dido oh widow dido ay widow dido is not sir my doublet as fresh as the first day i wore it i mean in a sort that sword was well fished for when i wore it at your daughter's marriage you cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense would i had never married my daughter there for coming thence my son is lost and in my rate she too who is so far from italy removed i ne'er again shall see her o oh, thou mine heir of naples and of milan what strange fish hath made his meal on thee sir he may live i saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs he trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swollen that met him his bald head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with his good arms and lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-worn bases bowed as stooping to relieve him i not doubt he came alive to land no no he's gone sir you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our europe with your daughter but rather lose her to an african where she at least is banished from your eye who hath cause to wet the grief on prithee peace you are kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us and the fair soul herself weighed between loathness and obedience at which end of the beam should bow we have lost your son i fear for ever milan and naples have more widows in them of this business making than we bring men to comfort them the fault's your own so is the dearest of the loss my lord sebastian the truth you speak did lack some gentleness and time to speak it in you rub the saw when you should bring the plaster <laughs> very well and most chirurgically it is foul weather in us all good sir when you are cloudy foul weather <laughs> very foul <laughs> had i plantation of this isle my lord he'd sow it with nettle seed or docks or mallows and were the king on't what would i do scape being drunk for want of wine in the commonwealth i would be contraries execute all things for no kind of traffic would i admit 
no name of magistrate letters should not be known riches poverty and use of service none contract succession born bound of land tilth vineyard none no use of metal corn or wine or oil no occupation all men idle all and women too but innocent and pure no sovereignty <laughs> yet he would be king on the latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning all things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavour treason felony sword pike knife gun or need of any engine would i not have but nature should bring forth of its own kind all voice and all abundance to feed my innocent people no marrying among his subjects none men all idle whores and knaves i would with such perfection govern sir to excel the golden age say his majesty <laughs> long live gonzalo and do you mark me sir prithee no more thou dost talk nothing to me i do well believe your highness and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing <laughs> twas you we laughed at who in this kind of merry fooling am nothing to you so you may continue and laugh at nothing still what a blow was there given and it had not fallen flat long you are gentlemen of brave metal you would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue it in five weeks without changing enter ariel invisible playing solemn music we went so and then go a bat fowling nay my good lord be not angry no i warrant you i will not adventure my discretion so weakly will you laugh me asleep for i am very heavy go sleep and hear us all sleep except alonzo sebastian and antonio what all so soon asleep i wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts i find they are inclined to do so please you sir do not omit the heavy offer of it it seldom visits sorrow when it doth it is a comforter we too my lord will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety thank you wondrous heavy alonzo sleeps exit ariel what a strange drowsiness possesses them it is the quality of the climate why doth it not then our eyelids sink i find not myself disposed to sleep nor i my spirits are nimble they fell together all as by consent they dropped as by a thunderstroke what might worthy sebastian oh what might no more and yet methinks i see it in thy face what thou shouldst be the occasion speaks thee and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head what art thou waking do you not hear me speak i do and surely it is a sleepy language thou speak'st out of thy sleep what is it thou didst say this is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open standing speaking moving yet so fast asleep noble sebastian thou lets thy fortune sleep die rather wingst whilst thou art waking thou dost snore distinctly there's meaning in thy snores i am more serious than my custom you must be so too if heed me which to do trebles thee over well i am standing water i'll teach you how to flow do so to ebb hereditary sloth instructs me oh 
if you but knew how you the purpose cherish while thus you mock it how in stripping it you more invest it ebbing men indeed most often do so near the bottom run by their own fear or sloth prithee say on the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield thus sir although this lord of weak remembrance this who shall be of as little memory when he is earthed hath here almost persuaded for he is a spirit of persuasion only professes to persuade the king his son's alive tis as impossible that he is undrowned as he that sleeps here swims i have no hope that he is undrowned oh out of that no hope what great hope have you no hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond but doubt discovery there will you grant with me that ferdinand is drowned he is gone then tell me who's the next heir of naples clarabel she that is queen of tunis she that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life she that from naples can have no note unless the sun were post the man in the moon's too slow till new-born chins be rough and razorable she that from whom we all were sea-swallowed though some cast again and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue what to come in yours and my discharge what stuff is this how say you tis true my brother's daughter's queen of tunis so is she heir of naples twixt which regions there is some space a space whose every cubit seems to cry out how shall that claribel measure us back to naples keep in tunis and let sebastian wake say this were death that now hath seized them why they were no worse than now they are there be that can rule naples as well as he that sleeps lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this gonzalo i myself could make a chuff of as deep chatter oh that you bore the mind that i do what a sleep were this for our advancement do you understand me methinks i do and how does your content tender your own good fortune i remember you did supplant your brother prospero true and look how well my garments sit upon me much fitter than before my brother's servants were then my fellows now they are my men but for your conscience <laughs> ay sir where lies that if twere a kype would put me to my slipper but i feel not this deity in my bosom twenty consciences that stand twixt me and milan candid be they and melt ere they molest here lies your brother no better than the earth he lies upon if he were that which now he's like that's dead whom i with disobedient steel three inches of it can lay to bed forever whilst you doing thus 
to the perpetual wink for aim i put this ancient morsel this sir prudence who should not upbraid our course for all the rest they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk they'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour thy case dear friend shall be my precedent as thou guardst me on i'll cut by naples draw thy sword one stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest and i the king shall love thee draw together and when i rear my hand do you the like to fall it on gonzalo oh uh, but one word they talk apart re-enter ariel invisible my master through his art foresees the danger that you his friend are in and sends me forth for else his project dies to keep them living sings in gonzalo's ear while you here do snoring lie open eyed conspiracy his time doth take if of life you keep a care shake a slumber and beware awake awake then let us both be sudden now good angels preserve the king they wake why how now ho awake why are you drawn wherefore this ghastly looking what's the matter uh, wh whilst we stood here secure at your repose even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls or r rather lions uh, it did not wake you it struck my ear most terribly i heard nothing oh twas a din to fry the monster's ear to make an earthquake sure it was the roar of a whole herd of lions heard you this gonzalo upon my honour sir i heard a humming and that a strange one too which did awake me i shaked you sir and cried as mine eyes opened i saw their weapons drawn there was a noise that verily tis best we stand upon our guard or that we quit this place let's draw our weapons lead off this ground and let's make further search for my poor son heavens keep him from these beasts for he is sure in the island lead away prospero my lord shall know what i have done so king go safely on to seek thy son exeunt scene two another part of the island enter caliban with a burden of wood a noise of thunder heard all the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs fens flats on prosper for and make him by inch meal or disease <sighs> the spirits hear me and yet i needs must curse but they'll not pinch fright me with urchin shows pitch me in the mire nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way unless he bid him but for every trifle are they set upon me sometime like apes that mow and shout at me and after bite me then like hedgehogs which lie tumbling in my barefoot way and mount their pricks at my footfall sometime am i all wound with adders who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness enter trinculo lo now lo here comes a spirit of east and to torment me for bring wood in slowly i'll fall flat but chance he will not mind me there's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all and another storm brewing i hear it sing i the wind yon same black cloud yon huge one looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor if it should thunder as it did before i know not where to hide my head 
yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by palefuls what have we here a man or a fish dead or alive a fish he smells like a fish a very ancient and fish-like smell a kind of not of the newest poor john a strange fish were i in england now as once i was and had but this fish painted not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver there would this monster make a man any strange beast there makes a man when they will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar they will lay out ten to see a dead indian legged like a man and his fins like arms warmer my troth i do now let loose my opinion hold it no longer this is no fish but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt alas the storm is come again my best way is to creep under his gavardine there is no other shelter hereabout and misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows i will here shroud till the dregs of the storm be past enter stefano singing a bottle in his hand i shall no more to see to see here shall i die ashore this is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral well here's my comfort the master the swabber the boatswain and i the gutter and his mate loved Maumeg and marion and marjorie but none of us cared for kate for she had a tongue with a tang would cry to a sailor go hang she loved not the savour of tar nor of pitch yet a tailor might scratch her wherever she did itch then the sea boys and let her go hang ah, this is a scurvy tune too but here's my comfort do not torment me <laughs> what's the matter have we devils here do you put tricks on with savages and men of ind eh? i have not scaped drowning to be afeard now of your four legs for it hath been said as proper a man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground and it shall be said so again while stefano breathes at its nostrils the spirit torments me oh. this is some monster of the isle with four legs who hath got as i take it an ague where the devil should he learn our language i will give him some relief if it be but for that if i can recover him and keep him tame and get to naples with him he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on neat's leather do not torment me prithee i'll bring my wood home faster he's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest he shall taste of my bottle if he have never drunk wine afore it will go near to remove his fit if i can recover him and keep him tame i will not take too much for him he shall pay for him that hath him and that soundly thou dost me yet but little hurt thou wilt anon i know it by thy trembling now prosper works upon thee come on your ways open your mouth here is that which will give language to you cat open your mouth this will shake your shaking i can tell you and that soundly you cannot tell who's your friend open your chaps again i should know that voice it should be but he is drowned and there are devils oh dear fend me four legs and two voices a most delicate monster his forward voice now is to speak well of his friend his backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract 
If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his egg. You come. Oh. Amen. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano. Oh, doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy! This is a devil and no monster. I will leave him. I have no long spoon. Stefano, if thou beest Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not afeard, thy good friend Trinculo. If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Thou art very Trinculo indeed. How earnest thou to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? Ah, I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. Prithee, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. Caliban aside. These be foreign things, and if they be not sprites, that a brave god, and bear celestial liquor, I will kneel to him. How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack, which the sailors heaved or board by this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with mine own hand since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, swear then how thou escapest. Swim ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck. I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole butt, man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, moon calf, how does thine egg you? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man of the moon when time was. Ah, oh, I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress show me thee and thy dog and thy bush. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear. Oh. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him. A very weak monster. The man of the moon. A most poor, credulous monster. Well drawn monster in good sooth. I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will Kiss thy foot, I prithee, be my god. By this light, a most perfidious and drunken monster. Whence God's asleep, he'll rob his bottle. I'll kiss thy foot, I'll swear myself thy subject. Come on, then, down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster, a most scurvy monster I could find in my heart to beat him. Come, kiss. But that the poor monster's in drink, an abominable monster. I'll show thee the best springs, I'll plug thee berries, I'll fish for thee, and get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve, I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. Oh, I prithee, let me bring thee where crabs grow. And I with my long nails will dig thee pignuts, shell thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes I'll get the young scammels from the rock. Wilt thou go with me? I prithee now lead the way without any more talking. Trinculo, the king, and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Here. Bear my bottle, fellow Trinculo, we'll fill him by and by again. Ah. Farewell, master, farewell, farewell. 
A howling monster, a drunken monster. No, my dams I'll make for fish, nor fetch and firing, out requiring, nor scrape, drain, share, nor wash, dish. Ban, ban, cacaola, ban, has a new master, get a new man. Freedom, heyday, heyday, freedom, freedom, heyday, freedom. Oh, brave monster, lead the way. Exeunt. End of Act Two. Act Three of The Tempest by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Before Prospero's Cell. Enter Ferdinand bearing a log. There be some sports are painful, and the labour delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This, my mean task, would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labours pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work, and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget, but these sweet thoughts to even refresh my labours, most busy lest when I do it. Enter Miranda and Prospero at a distance unseen. Alas, now, pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burned up those logs that you are enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns, twill weep for having wearied you. My father is hard at study. Pray now, rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonour undergo, while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it you look wearily no no mistress tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night i do beseech you chiefly that i might set it in my prayers what is your name miranda oh, my father i have broke your hest to say so admired miranda indeed the top of admiration with what's dearest to the world Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women, never any with so full so, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed, and put it to the foil. But you, ah, oh, you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best i do not know one of my sex no woman's face remember safe from my glass mine own nor have i seen more that i may call men than you good friend and my dear father how features are abroad i am skillless of but by my modesty the jewel in my dower i would not wish any companion in the world but you nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of but i prattle something too wildly and my father's precepts i therein do forget i am in my condition a prince miranda i do think a king oh i would not so 
and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly blow my mouth hear my soul speak the very instant that i saw you did my heart fly to your service there resides to make me slave to it and for your sake am i this patient log man do you love me oh heaven oh earth bear witness to this sound and crown would i profess with kind event if i speak true if hollowly invert what best is boded me to mischief i beyond all limit of what else see the world to love prize honour you i am a fool to weep at what i am glad of fair encounter of two most rare affections heavens rain grace on that which breathes between em wherefore weep you at mine unworthiness that dare not offer what i desire to give and much less take what i shall die to want but this is trifling and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows hence bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence i am your wife if you will marry me if not i'll die your maid to be your fellow you may deny me but i'll be your servant whether you will or no my mistress dearest and i thus humble ever my husband then i with a heart as willing as bondage heir of freedom here's my hand and mine with my heart in it and now farewell till half an hour hence a thousand thousand exeunt ferdinand and miranda severally so glad of this as they i cannot be who are surprised withal but my rejoicing at nothing can be more i'll to my book for yet ere supper-time must i perform much business appertaining exit scene two another part of the island enter caliban stefano and trinculo tell not me when the butt is out we will drink water not a drop before therefore bear up and board em servant monster drink to me servant monster the folly of this island they say there's but five upon this isle we are three of them if the other two be brained like us the stay it tosses drink servant monster when i bid thee thy eyes are almost set in thy head where should they be set else ye were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack for my part the sea cannot drown me i swam ere i could recover the shore five and thirty leagues off and on by this light thou shalt be my lieutenant monster or my standard your lieutenant if you list he's no standard will not run monsieur monster no go neither but you'll lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither mooncalf speak once in thy life if thou beest a good mooncalf how does thy honour let me lick thy shoe i'll not serve him he is not valiant thou liest most ignorant monster i am in case to justle a constable why thou debauched fish thou was there ever man a coward that hath drunk so much sack as i to-day wilt thou tell a monstrous lie being but half a fish and half a monster lo how it mocks me wilt thou let him my lord lord quoth he that a monster should be such a natural lo let again bite him to death i prithee trinculo keep a good tongue in your head if you prove a mutineer the next tree the poor monster's my subject and he shall not suffer indignity i thank my noble lord 
wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Marry will I, kneel and repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. Enter Ariel, invisible. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou. I would my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble him any more in's tale, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord, I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayest knock a nail in day's head. <laughs> thou liest, thou canst not. What a poor ninny's this, thou scurvy patch! Oh, I do beseech thy greatness, give him blows, and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink not but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand I'll turn my mercy out to doors and make a stockfish of thee. Why, what did I? I, I did nothing. I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. Beats him. As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Out of your wits and hearing, too. A pox on your bottle. This can suck and drinking do. A marine on your monster, and the devil take your fingers. Ha, ha, ha. Now, forward with your tail. Prithee, stand further off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand farther. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with a log bat his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasen with thy knife <laughs> remember first to possess his books for without them he is but a sot as i am nor hath not one spirit to command they all do hate him as rootedly as i burn by his books he has brave utensils for so he calls them which when he has a house he'll deck with all and that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter he himself calls her a non pareil. Oh, I never saw a woman but only Sycorax, my damn she. But she as far surpasseth Sycorax is great stuff's least. Is it so brave, alas? <laughs> Ay, Lord, she will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave brood. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Uh, excellent. Give me thy hand. I am sorry I beat thee, but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Ay, on mine honour. This will I tell my master. <laughs> Thou makest me marry. <laughs> I am full of pleasure. L let us be jocund. Will ye troll the catch ye taught me but while here? At thy request, monster, 
i will do reason any reason come on trinculo let us sing floutum and scoutum and scoutum and floutum thought is free that's not the tune ariel plays the tune on a table and pipe what is this same this is the tune of our catch played by the picture of nobody if thou beest a man show thyself in thy likeness if thou beest a devil take and thou list oh forgive me my sins he that dies pays all debts i defy thee mercy upon us art thou afeard no monster not i be not afeard the isle is full of noises sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears and sometimes voices that if i then had waked after long sleep will make me sleep again and then in dreaming the clouds me thought would open show riches ready to drop upon me that when i waked i cried to dream again this will prove a brave kingdom to me where i shall have my music for nothing when prospero is destroyed that shall be by and by i remember the story the sound is going away let's follow it and have to do our work lead monster will follow i would i could see this table eh? he lays it on we'll come I i'll follow stefano exeunt scene three another part of the island enter alonzo sebastian antonio gonzalo adrian francisco and others by your leaking i can go no further sir my old bones ache here's a maze trod indeed through forthrights and meanders by your patience i needs must rest me old lord i cannot blame thee who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits sit down and rest even here i will put off my hope and keep it no longer for my flatterer he is drowned whom thus we stray to find and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land well let him go antonio aside to sebastian i am right glad that he is so out of hope do not for one repulse forego the purpose that you resolve to effect sebastian aside to antonio the next advantage we will take thoroughly let it be to-night for now they are oppressed with travel they will not or cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh i say to-night no more solemn and strange music what harmony is this my good friends hark marvellous sweet music enter prospero above invisible enter several strange shapes bringing in a banquet they dance about it with gentle actions a salutation and inviting the king and company to eat they depart give us kind keepers heavens what were these ta, ta, a living drollery now i will believe that there are unicorns that in arabia there is one tree the phoenix throne one phoenix at this hour reigning there i'll believe both and what does else want credit come to me and i'll be sworn tis true travellers never did lie though fools at home condemn em if in naples i should report this now would they believe me if i should say i saw such islanders for certes these are people of the island who though they are of monstrous shape yet note their manners are more gentle kind than of our human generation you shall find many nay almost any 
prospero aside honest lord thou hast said well for some of you there present are worse than devils i cannot too much muse such shapes such gestures and such sound expressing though they want the use of tongue a kind of excellent dumb discourse prospero aside praise in departing they furnished strangely <laughs> no matter since they have left their vines behind for we have stomachs well please you taste of what is here not i faith sir you need not fear when we were boys who would believe that there were mountaineers dew lapped like bulls whose throats had hanged at em wallets of flesh or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts which now we find each putter out of five for one will bring us good warrant of i will stand to and feed although my last no matter since i feel the best is past brother my lord the duke stand to and do as we thunder and lightning enter ariel like a harpy claps his wings upon the table and with a quaint device the banquet vanishes you are three men of sin whom destiny that has to instrument this lower world and what is in it the never surfeited sea has cause to belch up you and on this island where man doth not inhabit you amongst men being most unfit to live i have made you mad and even with such like valor men hang and drown their proper selves alonzo sebastian and company draw their swords you fools i and my fellows are ministers of fate the elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds or with be mocked at stabs kill the still closing waters as diminish one dull that's in my plume my fellow ministers are like invulnerable if you could hurt your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted but remember for that's my business to you that you three from milan did supplant good prospero exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child for which foul deed the powers delaying not forgetting have incensed the seas and shores yea all the creatures against your peace thee of thy son alonso they have bereft and do pronounce by me lingering perdition worse than any death can be at once shall step by step attend you and your ways whose wrath to guard you from which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads is nothing but heart sorrow and a clear life ensuing he vanishes in thunder then to soft music enter the shapes again and dance with mocks and mouths and carry out the table bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed my ariel a grace it had devouring of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say so with good life and observation strange my meaner ministers their several kinds have done 
my high charms work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions, they now are in my power, and in these fits I leave them, while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine loved darling. Exit above. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did bass my trespass, therefore my son, in the ooze is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than e'er plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddied. Exit. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions thou art. I'll be thy second. Exeunt Sebastian and Antonio. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work a great time after, now gins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you, that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly, and hinder them from where this ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. Exeunt. End of Act Three.